2014 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of uh, March 25th, 2014. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 25th, 2014 minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the March 25th, 2014 meeting. Anybody second? Second. All right, Mike seconds. Um, any discussion on the minutes? The minutes is the 27th or the 25th? This is the March 25th we're discussing now. I wasn't present for that meeting, so I don't vote, right? You were not present, so you don't vote. That's correct. All right, uh, having no discussion, um, all in favor? All right, so that's five to nothing approved. Next order of business is to approve the May 27th, 2014 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve that set of minutes? I have a minor amendment. Okay. To page six, line 20. Okay. After equipment sheds, adding as is essential to falling within the definition of alternative tower structure and accessory use. He said mm -hmm. As is essential to falling within the definition of alternative, capital A, tower, capital T, structure, capital S, and accessory use. Okay, so that's on page six, line 20, and that language would be inserted after the word sheds? And before the word were. were. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> With that uh, small revision, um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Uh, second, anybody? Okay, we have a second um, from Aaron. And uh, any discussion on the minutes? Josh, I'll forego voting since I was not present at that. That's meeting. correct. That's correct. So was I. All right. Um, so all in favor of the May t of, of approving the May 27, 2014 uh, board minutes. Is five to nothing. Approved. All right, moving on to old business. Um, the next agenda item is to hear the request of Mark Toothacre to reapprove the variance at 2 Wheeler Road, map U16, lot 1. This variance was unanimously approved at the December 11th, 2013 meeting, but it was not recorded at the Registry of Deeds within 90 minutes as required by the zoning ordinance. Uh, Mr. Tuthaker is not here. Um, why don't we table that um, for now? Uh, um, go ahead. He may not be coming. Okay. Can can we uh, can do, we deal with it? Sure. Do we okay. do we know he's not coming? I don't know that. Okay. Well, we we could table it and. and Put it, clearly he's incredibly confident. It's going to go well. Um, Should we move I, it to the end of the agenda? Is why don't we just push it to the end in case he does show up? I'd hate to, okay. to do the item without him here. If he's going to show up, if he doesn't show up, we'll just do it. It'll be pretty quick. All right. Um, moving on now to the new business. Uh, the first item in the new business is to hear the request of Elizabeth M. Noft and Mary Ahern for a variance to add a front porch to their house at 8 Elmwood Road, map U03, lot 21. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Herbert and I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicants Elizabeth Noft and Marie Ahern. 
uh, in connection with their application for a variance to construct a, a front porch on their property located at Elm, uh, 8 Elmwood Road. Um, in addition to the application for the variance, you should have a number of plans, sketches, drawings, and photos in the materials uh, that depict the current condition of the applicant's property, uh, depict the proposed uh, porch that the applicants would like to construct, as well as some of the abutting properties in the neighborhood. Um, and all of these materials are, are submitted in support of the uh, variance application. Uh, as I mentioned, the applicant's property is located at 8 Elmwood Road, uh, and it, it current, currently exists um, precast concrete steps leading up to the front door and a small four-foot roof that covers the base of the steps. What the applicants would like to do is remove the small eight-foot roof that overhangs the steps and remove the precast concrete steps and con construct a new uh, front porch that would extend eight feet from the edge of the house towards the road and lengthwise extend roughly 21 feet uh, along the length of, of the property. Um, because the, uh, the, the actual proposed porch, I think, is uh, depicted on P1 and P2 in the materials, in their uh, current state of the properties depicted on E1 and E4. Because the current uh, zoning ordinance provides for a 20-foot front yard setback, the construction of the porch would extend eight feet from the house, uh, thereby leaving 15 feet six inches from the edge of the porch to the road, so a variance is required to allow the applicants to construct the porch that they desire. I'll just briefly go through um, each of the elements of the variance, talk about the application, why we think um, it meets all of those elements and why it should be um, granted. And again, I'll refer to some of those plans that we've submitted throughout my brief presentation. Just a little background, this property is believed to have been constructed roughly in uh, 1929, and the applicants were told that the property at one point actually had a porch, which is similar to the porch that they want to reconstruct. Uh, despite their good faith efforts to try to find a historical photo that depicted this porch as it at one time existed, they were unsuccessful. But in the course of the remodeling of their property, when they removed the front siding of the property, and you can see, I believe it's on photo E1, what you can clearly see is the outline of the porch that at one time existed on the property. You can see the framing and the dimensions of that porch that at one time existed match precisely to the porch that they want to construct. So I think that's an important piece of this variance application. Really what they want to do is um, uh, they want to refurbish or reconstruct something that was already there um, as opposed to something brand new. Uh, and I think that's an important piece uh, of their application. Uh, in terms of at least the first element, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property um, and not the general neighborhood. Because of the configuration of the lot, there really is no other alternative to reconstruct uh, or restore that porch that originally existed without the granting of a variance. There's just dimensionally you can't do it. Um, what happened here is the zoning ordinance changed. So at one time this porch was there for some reason or another, uh, perhaps it fell into a state of disrepair and the prior owners financially couldn't reconstruct it as it existed and they did something on a much smaller scale. The zoning ordinance changed and now the applicants really are prohibited from restoring an essential element and feature of the property that at one time existed without, without the granting of the variance. So I think that's imp an important piece of, of, of their application. Uh, just next, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood or detrimentally affect the fair market value of the property. We feel that the applicant sh application strongly meets this element. Um, again, what they want to do is certainly not change the character of the neighborhood here. Uh, quite the contrary, they want to preserve the character of the neighborhood because what they want to do is restore an essential element of this property that was at one time there and also keep in harmony with their abutting properties. Their property immediately to the east and immediately to the west have eight-foot porches that extend from their property. 
Each of the properties to the east and the west from the edge of the house to the road is 23 feet 6 inches and then from the edge of the porch to the road is 15 feet 6 inches. That matches precisely with the dimensional um, uh, features of the porch that they want to construct. So really they just want to preserve what at one time was on their property and preserve the character of the neighboring properties in the, in the neighborhood. So they certainly don't want to change the essential features, characteristics of this neighborhood, but they want to preserve it. Uh, in, in addition to the materials, the plans, uh, there's also a number of letters written by uh, neighbors of the applicants strongly supporting the application in favor of, of uh, the construction of this porch. And that's just further evidence that certainly the granting of this application won't adversely affect the fair market value of the property. But, you know, as, as the neighbors think, it will preserve it and increase it by uh, maintaining consistency and harmony amongst the porches that are presently there in the neighborhood. Um, just continuing on, the practical difficulty here is not the result of certainly not the result of actions that the applicants have taken. Again, it's just the unique circumstance of having the zoning ordinance change. Um, and again, the only, the only way to allow the construction of this porch and to get the, the, the best economic return on their property if they ever want to sell it uh, is by the granting of the, a variance that will allow them to restore this porch that at one time existed on the property. There is no other feasible alternative for this, again, because of the unique configuration of the lot. The only way to construct this porch is through the, the granting of a variance. And uh, we certainly don't know of any uh, unreasonably adverse, uh, granting the variance will create an unreasonable adverse effect on the natural environment. We're not aware that this lot uh, is, any, uh, is in any environmentally sensitive areas. Certainly any construction will uh, adhere to proper drainage or sedimentation control and the construction and design of this porch will, you know, be consistent with the international building codes and consistent, you know, certainly won't have any uh, adverse impact on the natural environment uh, of, of, the, of the lot. So we think the application uh, strongly meets the variance requirements. Um, that's all I had. I did want to clarify one thing on the application. Um, I was given the dimensions in terms of the eight-foot porch and the edge of the porch to the road would be 15 feet 6 inches. What, what I wasn't given is what would be the distance from the end of the stairs leading off the porch to the road. So I crudely tried to measure it myself and came up with 9 feet 1 inch, but Ben pointed out that certainly no variance can gr uh, be granted for less than 10 feet. So that certainly will be changed and there's a number of things that the applicants and their uh, contractors can do construction-wise just to preserve, to make sure that the variance is not for less than 10 feet. It would be 10 feet from the edge of the stairs to the road. So that's all I had. If and there's any questions for me, and certainly the applicants here are here as well, i uh, be happy to take them. And the, the variance, the 10-foot limit goes to the stairs, not to the edge of the structure? The stairs count as part of the structure? That's correct. Uh, aside from the, the apparent framing that was sort of discovered when the, the siding came off and certainly the design of the, the neighboring houses that have what appear to be a similar porch to that proposed, are there any uh, perhaps photos of the original porch or plans of that? Uh, I, I can just briefly speak to that. I don't believe there is, but I'll let the applicants, because they did, they actually... Uh, uh, tried to work with the librarians who thought there may be some historical photos, but uh, did can you can you stand up at the podium so you can get you on the microphone? Thank you. So Betsy Noft. Um, no is the answer, but um, what we did was um, check with the historical society, um, and there was there are several um, websites that uh, record properties. Um, dating back to the 1950s and went back as far as that. It, they're all aerial shots and it's difficult to discern whether there's a porch or not. 
to our eyes it looked like there was, but you know we're we're biased. Um, they, uh, but we don't. We we asked neighbors for actual photos of the property with the porch, and it was taken down so long ago. It was taken down probably 40 years ago. So, oh, okay. no, no photos. Thanks. Is is uh, are you aware of when when the ordinance changed at, at, at that point at which uh, you mentioned the ordinance changed, and that's what. That's what precludes a porch today, but obviously didn't uh, previously. Do you know the date of that change? By that it went to a 20-foot setback? No, I'm not sure the date of that. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Just one question. I'll make this In the packet, we had this one sheet. Um, it doesn't look like we're stapled. Um, is this familiar with you? Is this something that was part of the application itself? It lists the addresses and then it has a breakdown on feet uh, between the sidewalk and the stairs, sidewalk and the porch, sidewalk and the house. Yep. Um, could you describe uh, who did that? Doc, this the, the applicants actually put that together. Thank you. Any other? Uh, sorry, I have another question. Okay, thank you. So no further questions? I, I just want to say it's probably one of the most complete applications I've ever seen come before this board. So thank you. It makes our job a lot easier. So. Thank you. I especially like the photo of uh, the front. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, any comment from the public? I know we've received a number of letters um, that were attached to the applicant's application um, in support of the um, granting of the variance. Any, any further comment from the public? Okay. You um, can open it up now to board discussion, if there is any. Uh, I'll make one comment. Is that uh, in the application, um, Residents at number 10, number 8, number 7, number 9, Elwood, uh, have submitted letters in support. Uh, nobody else has opined one way or the other since notice was given. It's just those four. I think there were a couple that. I thought I saw one I for saw two. One there may have been one that came separate. The Briggs, I think, on Mountain View that came in. So the other letters that were submitted also in support. Also in support. Uh, Three Mountain View Road and one Maplewood Road, all in support. Okay. Yes. Any other comments or discussion from the board? Somebody like to make a motion. I've, I'm, I've got one okay. sort of point, uh, or perhaps a point of discussion. Um, certainly, I, I, I agree with uh, with the applicant's um, arguments to uh, sort of the conditions that need to be met to grant the variance. My, my question is related to I think it's so. It's, I'm in section 19.5.2. Uh, B and then on page 49 of my ordinance anyways notwithstanding the definition of dimensional standards no variance shall be granted and then there's conditions A B and C and C is to either reduce a setback to less than 10 feet or the shortest non-conforming setback distance created by the existing building I think clearly the the applicant has said that the, they'll, they'll meet that 10 feet, but the, the shortest non-conforming setback created by the existing building is today is what, Ben? Uh, the, I, I believe the building today is conforming. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the way I read that is, you know, if the building was seven feet 
from a property line, it, you could go below the 10 and you could come down to seven. But if there's no shorter setback, the board is limited to 10. Sure, okay. You think it's a conforming lot or not? It's a non-conforming lot, with a, okay. but I believe the structure is conforming. The, are those existing stairs? Yeah, actually, actually the existing stairs would extend into the front setback and make it non-conforming. That's correct. Sorry about that. So it's my understanding that the other homes in the street, the ones with the porches, would also be classified as non-conforming right now? That's correct. They, they are close, okay. More so. More so. And you were just saying that you read that as either 10 or less than what's already non-conform, like, okay. Yeah, you're, limi you're, you're, you're limited to going down to 10 unless, unless, unless there's- Unless already beyond 10. Unless there's a case where you already have a portion of the house that's less than 10, then that brings, gives you more authority to go below 10, but only, only in that case. So, so if they're, they're staying at, They've, they've said that the stairs will be 10, they'll meet that, that 10 foot then. Correct. And I'm satisfied with that. Yeah, the, the front of the stairs will, will be 10 feet from the front property line. Okay. okay, thank you. Any other comments from the board? Somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the variance request to um, Build the proposed porch um, that is 15-6 from the property line, and the stairs from the porch are 10 feet from the front of the property line. I'll second. Uh, any discussion on the pending motion? Okay, all in favor of the motion? So that is seven nothing approved. And I'm going to go read the uh, findings of fact and additional findings of fact. Um, findings of fact one, this is a variance request for map U3, lot 21, 8 Elmwood Road, applicant Elizabeth M. Noft and Mary Ahern. Two, Elizabeth M. Noft and Mary Ahern, the owners, are the owners of record of the subject property. Three, 8 Elmwood Road is a non-conforming lot in the RC district. The required setbacks are 20 feet from the front property line, 10 feet from the side, and 15 feet from the rear property line. Four, the proposed porch is 15 feet six inches from the front property line, and the stairs from the porch are 10 feet from the front property line. Side and rear setbacks are compliant. Additional findings of fact. The need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Two, the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. Three, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Four, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. Five, the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. And six, the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. Uh, and conclusion, there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance, and a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30 AMRSA Section 4353, 4C. So all in favor of those findings and conclusion? All right, seven nothing. Thank you.
Right, the next order of business is to hear the request of Philip E. Burke of 220 Fowler Road, map U44, lot 6. Mr. Chair, right next to you. Um, I, I, I'm um, going yes. to need to recuse myself from this particular <laughs> application. And uh, uh, Mr. Burke's an employee at the Perpuda Club. And I'm, uh, the president of the Perpuda Club, so I feel there's a conflict of me sitting, sitting here pining one way or the other. So, uh, okay. John, wouldn't you rather be golfing anyway? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. So we will be hearing number two to hear the request of Philip E. Burke of 220 Fowler Road, Map U44, Lot 6, for a request for a variance to add an 80 square foot shed to his property. A variance is necessary to place the shed 23.5 feet from the property line, 21 feet from the side property line, from the front, sorry. A variance is necessary to place the shed 23.5 feet from the front property line, 21 feet from the side property line, and 75 feet from the wetland associated with Great Pond. Mr. Burke. Hi. Up until now, I always had a place to store my landscaping equipment, but uh, my par parents have vacated uh, the old post office and uh, will be selling the property, so uh, I need a shed. Do you want to walk us through your um, application and kind of provide us a little bit of background uh, regarding your property and, and uh, request for the shed? I've lived there since 1997, and uh, uh, what I was going to do is just maybe, I'm not even sure yet, I'm going to do this take dad's shed from his property and bring it out and plank it right in front of my driveway and um, work it right there next to the house. Um, uh, I think what uh, uh, Ben was telling me is that if I got rid of some of the impervious things that are on the property would help and I've got rid of one of the patios and I'm certainly willing to get rid of another one but I wanted to wait to see if I would get approved before I ripped up the other patio. It's uh, flagstone. <coughs> Uh, I'm more, more than likely I'm going to buy a new shed and have it brought over rather than bring dad's over and uh, go with an 8 by 10. His is actually a 9 and a half by 9 and a half. <laughs> so um, I just don't think it's worth it to uh, pay someone to, to drag that. It's pretty old. It's an old shed, but it's, it's fairly solid. Uh, out, out here, when it would be just uh, almost the same to just go get a new one. <laughs> is there any place on the property where the shed could be placed that is, is, uh, would not require a variance from the shoreland overlay zone, the 100-foot setback from that wetland? I'm not really sure. Uh, you mean go like go closer to the road? Uh, Even then, there a minimum. I mean, I I'm, as it as it was, the, I, I, by putting it where I want to put it, it's right in line where the house is. It's no, it wouldn't be any closer to the road than the closer to the road than the house actually is. Um, so, and that's depicted in the the sketch that you provided. <coughs> That, the, the sketch I gave you is where I'd like to put it. Yeah. And there's a pad, there's, I didn't show you the patio that's between the proposed shed and the house, but it's, that patio is actually 8 by 12, and it's really, it was more for decoration than a, it's a walkway, but it's not, there's a lot of it that's, uh, it's not used as a walkway. It's just kind of a neat looking thing. Uh, but uh, that can go, and then just turn that whole area into grass. Is the wetland along that whole back property line or just on the right-hand side? 
It's all the whole back the end. Whole way. It's you know, faces south to Great Pond. letters either way on this one or? no there weren't I, I did have a conversation with a representative from the DEP uh, that just called to because I sent the notice to them so they called and had a few questions about the application and said they weren't going to go on record either way I, I could also add that uh, Mr. Berg did ask me to visit the property to see if there were any other alternatives, and I did go out there with a tape measure, and, uh, and he's, it, it's a very small lot. You can see from the site plan that even if he pushed the shed right against the road, it still wouldn't meet the 100-foot wetland setback, uh, and it's a, it's a very, very small lot for the RA zone. Pretty rare to see a lot that size in the RA zone, and the wetland, the wetland does, the, the wetland does carry the whole length. It pretty much goes parallel to the rear of those lots all the way along there. <laughs> Question: are you, yeah. are you planning on placing anything underneath the shed? I would go with whatever the professionals think I should do. Not a slab, but uh, I don't want to get into that, but just uh, either cinder blocks or the pressure treated, whatever they deem, but I didn't want to get into making a slab. Okay. Yeah. So it won't be increasing the impervious surface. It'll be, the, the up. shed will be up. Up, yes. And there'll be stone underneath it or something to allow. Correct, yes, yeah. And the the impervious surface, he, he's going to do a swap for the impervious surface. He, he's going to pull up, there, yeah. there's a few existing patios, and uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be an even exchange okay. for, the, for the 80 square feet that he's adding. Uh, 80 square feet will be removed elsewhere. Okay, so it is, it, it'll be swapped. Yes. Could you, just just to clarify, and yeah. just so if when we get to findings of fact, yeah. uh, what size shed are you proposing? Eight by 10. Eight by 10. Yeah, yeah. And that's whether or not it's, it's the existing shed you're gonna move or whether you go buy a new one. And they'll both be. Well, I, I can't, I, if I tell you eight by 10, then I won't be taking dads. That's a nine and a half by okay. nine and a half, almost. It's nine and a half by ten, actually. It's closer to ten than it is nine and a half by nine and a half. And so um, I, that's kind of the way I'm playing it now, is I just would rather have a new shed brought over and a groovier roof line anyway. I kind of like, uh, I'm not so sure I like the roof line on this shed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I, I encourage the applicant to go to 80 square feet because there is the exemption in the ordinance that allows the 80 square foot shed to go from a 250 foot setback to a 100 foot setback. I thought it may be more palatable for the board if he went with a nine and a half by 10 and a half shed. The, the setback reduction uh, would be 175 feet versus 25 feet for 80 square feet. The, the other properties in your neighborhood are, are generally larger. 
Uh, the one right next to me uh, is exactly the same. Uh, I should say to the west of me and then to the east of me, of course, that's Gallagher's and he's got, he bought the Carver lot, so he's, he's got to be 300 feet frontage and he, 100 back, so he's, you know, he's got a huge, the gigantic, uh, what do you call it, Great Pond yep. house, yeah. Other questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank you. I'd like to open it up now for board discussion. Public comment? Oh, thank you. I'd like to open it up now for public comment. All right. Uh, so, having no public comment, uh, board discussion. Did you? Um, sure, why not? Why not put a shed on there, right? How do you do it? Uh, how? <coughs> well, I mean, we have to go through the undue hardship factors. <coughs> the landing question cannot yield a reasonable rate of return. Sorry. I mean, do you want to get into the... What provision are you on? Uh, 19.5 to... B2. Are you on page 49? I am. It's section 2, though. Yeah. Shoreline, under the shoreline performance overlay. Yeah. So how do you define undue hardship? It's, it's got factors right here. Yeah. Thank you. That's not, that's not my query. Um, We can go through. I'm just I'm troubled how we get through the process and say yes, green light. Each question. <coughs> I mean, I hear what I hear what you're saying. Uh, is there a general sense? I mean, I. Is I mean, is is there an argument that it cannot yield a reasonable rate of return unless you can put a shed? If you can't store any of the usual items that you would want to store in a shed or a garage. But a reasonable rate of return, you can still sell the property. We had an early applicant last year that was looking for a garage uh, open in the Oakhurst to our, uh, neighborhood. The question was that they had a larger family and they bought the house and they didn't have a garage. So they were trying to justify the variance for the garage. We were debating whether if you buy a house, are you entitled to a garage? The answer was, I think, no. It is what it is when you buy it. Um, does he need coverage to put stuff in the shed? Okay. Where do you put the shed? And, and um, I am troubled. How do we process through the question <coughs> by saying yes, it meets each of these without actually you know, twisting our cells to get through the process? I, I don't. I don't necessarily disagree. At least where I'm at now, I, I'm struggling with just fitting the request in with the language of the ordinance. Yeah, and I also see this provision as a restrictive basis upon which a variance is requested and given. Um, and the, not really, I guess it would be E, um, the notwithstanding definition at the bottom. It's not listed as E, but it's, 
it's in that list category. Right. Um, so on the bottom 49, there is a requirement that's not enumerated. I'm referring to it as E. But, mm -hmm. um, it, it's fairly strong language. Conceptually, I have no problem with the shed there. Why not? I would like to have a shed on my piece of property too. Any, anybody have some general pushback to what Matt has said? I mean, I'm, I'm certainly open to be convinced by a good argument that it fits in with the ordinance, but I, I, I don't have one myself. Um, and If the shed is temporary in the sense that it's just sitting on the dirt. Or blocks. Or, or blocks. Can it be in a setback? So no. Oh, then the answer is no. It, it cannot be in a setback if it's temporary and it's, and it, and it's not affixed to the land. It just sits there. It's still a structure. Basically, if he, if he purchased a canopy from L.L. Bean, a 10, an 8 by 10 canopy, and set it up and stored his equipment under it, that would fit. That would work, even though it's still increasing the impervious surface. Well, yeah, I mean, and he said that to me informally. Is, you know, the, the alternative here is a, a blue tarp over my lawnmower and snowblower, and so. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the, the alternative is the stuff sitting there with a blue tarp over it, unfortunately, which is not a, blue tarps are not structures, <laughs> certainly not in Maine. I'm sorry, what all, a little more expensive option is that he buys a trailer, leaves the wheels on it, you know, what the, the landscaping guys have, just parks it there. And that is a temporary garage? There's, there's children watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yes, if, if a trailer is registered, it is not a structure. That's what you're getting at. Yes, thank you, sir. Any other discussion? Unfortunately, the standards that apply to the to us to giving a variance of a setback for the shoreland zone are undue hardship, which is a much higher standard than the practical difficulty standard that applies if we just want to do a variance of a regular dimensional standard. And so it makes it much more difficult for us to give the variance of that 100 foot setback from the great pond wetland that's on the back of your property because that standard is so much more difficult. It would ha you would have to be able to establish that you couldn't get any reasonable return from your property at all, that um, your property is unique, it's different from all of the other properties in your neighborhood such that you have a need to get reasonable return from your property that is associated with the variance and that the variance would not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. I think that one is probably pretty consistent as well, that you also have not self-created the hardship, which is also probably the case. But the reasonable return piece in conjunction with the kind of distinguishing your property from all of the other properties in the neighborhood is what's really hard about that standard. I'd love to grant the variance, but I agree. I mean, the language is, is pretty clear, pretty plain, speaks for itself. As much as I don't like the idea of a blue tarp shed, um, I don't know what options we really have. I, I'm from Oxford County. I've seen plenty of blue tarp sheds in my day. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we don't, we're not given a lot of discretion in this section of the ordinance. Um, it's it, it's pretty much ties the board's hands with respect to um, you know when and when we can and when we cannot grant a variance uh, for this sort of request. Um, so, do we have a motion? I move to deny the request for variance. I'll second. 
And any uh, discussion on the um, pending motion? All right. All in favor? All right, so that's six nothing to uh, deny the request of uh, Philip E. Burke of 220 Fowler Road, map U44, lot six, for a request for a variance to add an 80 square foot shed to his property. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and read the initial findings of fact, um, which are uh, one, uh, the variance request for map U44, lot 6, 220 Fowler Road, applicant Philip E. Burke. Two, Philip E. Burke is the owner of record of map U44, lot 6, 220 Fowler Road. The subject lot is a non conforming lot, is in the RA district. The lot is also in the Resource Protection 1 Critical Wetlands District, the Shoreland Performance Overlay District, and the Great Pond. Watershed Overlay District. Four, the required property line setbacks in the RA zone for an 80 square foot shed are 25 feet front, 10 feet side, and 5 feet rear. Five, the required setback in the Shoreland Performance Overlay District for an 80 square foot shed is 100 feet from the RP1CW wetland and 250 feet from the normal high water line of Great Pond. Six, the required setback in the Resource Protection Zone for an 80 square foot shed is 100 feet from the RP1 CW wetland. Seven, the applicant application is compliant with the Great Pond Watershed Overlay District regulations. Eight, the applicant is seeking a var the applicant sought a variance to the front RA zone setback in order to place the shed 23.5 feet from the front property line. And nine, the applicant sought a variance to be 75 feet from the RP1 wetland associated with Great Pond, where the zoning ordinance requires an 100 foot setback. And all in favor of those findings of fact? Six nothing. Thank you, Mr. Burke. And, uh, Item number three um, is to hear the request for reconsideration of Verizon Wireless for an administrative appeal that was denied by the Zoning Board on May 27, 2014. <coughs> the subject property is 11 Avon Road, map U12, lot 12. Uh, before we get started, a couple things. I know there were several board members who were not here for the original, both John and um, Mike, for the original uh, request or appeal. Do they sit for this? I, I believe that we would not participate in the actual decision as to whether to reconsider, but if the reconsideration were reopened, and I believe it's de novo at that point, we could participate. But John, I'd be interested to get your input on that as well. Well, as I'm fond of saying, as being one of the few not attorneys sitting at this table. That means you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, I, I would think, I, I actually think that does make sense, that, that um, the reconsideration should be for those that were here last month enjoying the party. And, uh, and if it is reopened, then we'll, we'll weigh in at that point. Okay. Um, and then, uh, unless the board disagrees, I'd like to just focus the presentation at this point on whether or not to grant the reconsideration and not get into the, the substantive issues that were raised at the last meeting until the board decides whether or not to grant the reconsideration. Is that a board discussion or is that a motion? I, I will move. No, I mean, I mean 
Is that something that we're discussing internally or something that we're taking a presentation and public comment on? The reconsideration decision. In, in terms of what? I guess it's not clear to me that we need input from anyone other than the board oh, on period. whether to reconsider. reconsider or not. Um, are you, so you're saying your inclination is we don't need any argument as to whether or not to reconsider? I don't think so. I mean, it's a board decision, right? It's not. I mean, it's a board decision, but so is everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. Um, it's not a. It's not like we're deciding a. It's not like we would take public comment on that. It's not like you no. think we would. No, I think you're you're correct in my opinion. I mean, to me, the minute we start taking comment, you're opening the door to going into the substance. Well, no, it's going to be very difficult I, I, to I agree. put that genie back in the bottle once we start it. I agree with that. Um, would the board just like to discuss, uh, not open this up for public comment or comment from, I guess, Verizon, who's moving for reconsideration, just discuss this amongst ourselves? I think we make a procedural, my personal opinion is that we make a procedural decision on whether we are or are not rehearing and then we proceed from there. I'm comfortable with that. Because if we do, if we do reconsider, then that'll give the public an opportunity to comment and everybody to speak. Yes. So I guess the issue now before the board is simply whether or not we will grant the request for reconsideration. Mm hmm There's a letter from Veraldina dated June 5th, which in the prefatory paragraph cites to 30A MRSA section 26913 f yep. which is the statute. It does not cite, as far as I saw, any provisions of our ordinance regarding our ability to reconsider or opt not to reconsider. In the Bran and Isaacson letter dated June 18th, 2014, there is, on page two, there is a citation to that same statute and also to section 1953E of our ordinance, which specifies that it is within our discretion whether we opt to reconsider or not. No, yep, the board may, rec uh, that's the statute, right? And so you're referring to 1953E, which is cited in the Bran and Isaacson. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the pertinent language there is the board may consider a new appeal or application within this one year period if it determines that owing to a mistake of law or misunderstanding of fact and injustice was done or that a change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant reconsideration. And it does then specify that should we decide to, they don't call it reconsider, to renew that it would be essentially de novo. We'd right. be starting over. So, I mean, we're basically looking for um, a mistake of law or a misunderstanding of fact um, or some change. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd like to fo focus the board discussion on that. If, if um, Chair, I would add a, a qualifier to that statement, that the mistake, mistake of fact or law results in an injustice. injustice. So it, what standard is that? It's, for me, it's a little higher than just a, a, a technical mistake. 
the arguments that are presented in the Veral Dana letter. Uh, Attorney Anderson, I, I yeah, I just, I just, I know that you're not hearing on the merits, but I think on the issue of what the standard is for you doing your own decision of whether to reconsider, um, I have a comment on the applicability of your ordinance, which I don't think applies. This is governed exclusively by the state standard, which does impact the standard that you folks are looking at in making this threshold determination. Um, that hasn't this, been addressed. This information is not in his letter. It's not. And we have not opened for public comment. I appreciate that. But w of course, Brandon Isaacson's uh, comment came. We have not submitted anything on this kind of jurisdictional issue of what ordinance. You can tell me not to speak, but I, I disagree yeah, I, with the legal standard and would like an opportunity to comment on what I think that standard is for you making this preliminary determination without any comment on the substance of the project or any of the standards. Uh, okay. But I appreciate I it's entirely just, up to you. I think we'll just continue the board discussion and we'll invite comment if okay. we decide to. With regard to this statute, I'm not seeing anything that specifies any standards for, it simply says that we may reconsider. It is completely discretionary. It specifies no standard. Right. To the extent we look to beyond that to our ordinance, to whether there are or are not mistakes of fact or law, um, does not seem inconsistent with this determining what may means. Mr. Chairman, the, the point of uh, a mistake of law that's referenced in, in our ordinance, you, you, the attorneys can feel free to correct me on this, but it, it, I believe Mr. Anderson is making the argument that perhaps we made a mistake of law in finding on the concealment issue. Do you guys see that similarly? And I'm not, I'm not sure he's correct in that. I think there's a counter argument to it, but yeah, I, I mean, what? I, mean, I think the argument from the submission was that the issue of concealment wasn't properly before the board, and it wasn't an issue that Ben had um, based his denial of the permit on. And it really is an issue that comes up later in front of planning board if it gets to that point. And therefore, that should not have been one of the reasons for our um, denial of the appeal. And I think the Brandon Isaacson uh, letter offers a, a counter argument to that. Yes. When, when I, you know, when I look at these, when I look at the the standards that 
that are in section 1953E, there's the mistake of law, misunderstanding of fact, which in my opinion, I, I, I don't think we misunderstood any of the, any of the facts. Um, and uh, I'm not sure an injustice was done either. So at least from my perspective, um, and I think the Perhaps injustice was done is, is that that sort of qualifies. It's a mistake of law or misunderstanding, um, owing to a mistake of law or misunderstanding of fact, an injustice was done. Yeah. So it's, it's you first find that there was a mistake of law or misunderstanding, right. and then find that there was an injustice. So it's kind of this two step, you know, as Matt kind of mentioned, this heightened standard. Any other board comments, discussion? I don't think that there are any new, that this new submission for, on June 5th from Vera Dana evidence, evidences any mistakes of law or fact in our previous decision. It does raise new twists on arguments that were already made based on existing facts that were already in there. But I don't think that, that, that new twists on arguments constitute evidence of a prior mistake of law on our part. I would agree. Any further discussion, comment? Um, you know, I guess before we move forward, Attorney Anderson's been standing there. Is it, the, is that the decision of the board not to take any comment, any presentation from either Attorney Anderson or anybody opposing Verizon um, with respect to the motion that's pending? just to reconsider. I certainly wouldn't object to hearing from them. I, I mean, I mean, just I think as a cur uh, it, it, it might be a, a courtesy to hear from people who, who came to speak, but. I mean, I, 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 I go back, I don't, I am loath to reopen this and have an hour of discussion that will start to bleed over into um, substantive issues. Yeah, I, I, My I, concern I, is that this record will also get we should bear in mind what happens to this record and what it does to our existing record. And we should be use caution in op taking the lid out of that bottle. The only comment that I would have is that I too um, would give a courtesy to give a, a, a time allotment for people if they wish to speak. So however long. But I do take the point that it's important that the record stays as, as fairly organized as possible, and we don't have a procedural problem uh, amongst the board and how we actually do, do our business. So I'm more likely to say that uh, there's no further discussion if the board chooses to limit um, the discussion just amongst ourselves and the, the, the parties and the public do not have an opportunity to speak yet. I mean, we've received submissions. I mean, we've received argument that has been submitted to the board on the issue of reconsideration. Um, and again, it's in the board's discretion. I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable limiting it to the discussion that we're having. But, but if somebody wants to make a motion to allow discussion, I'll make a motion to allow discussion uh, from the applicant as, as well as from the public. As a point of order, open-ended, or do you have a fixed amount of time that you're thinking of? Yeah, perhaps limiting uh, the length of the, the comments could, could serve to, 
sort of limit discussion to arguments for um, reconsideration as opposed to rehearing facts of the case. Uh, so I would perhaps limit it to, uh, I would think that neither of these uh, letters are, are too lengthy, I can think. I, I would think uh, either party could go through it in five minutes. So five minutes per party and five minutes total for the public. Sure, that sounds reasonable to me. Are you seconding? Um, as a point of order, I'm just clarifying. Okay. Do, do we have a second on that motion? Would somebody else like to make a motion? For, is there any further board discussion? Is there, is there any more discussion that we want to have on the motion for reconsideration? Or would somebody like to move to deny the motion for reconsideration or the, re the request for reconsideration? Chair, I have a question. Uh, unless you want to you'd like to speak. Go ahead. Um, on the issue of discussion, maybe it's important for us to hear, hear people speak. Is that what it make us up, uh, assist us with making the decision as to whether we or reopen uh, and have further reconsideration. So would you like to make a... I, so the question is, do if we open up the discussion to be persuaded to step further, or do we just say, right, no, we've had, our, we've had a discussion, let's move on. And it doesn't sound like from our discussion this evening that none, none of the papers have persuade us that there is um, a mistake of law or a mistake of fact that leads to an injustice. So we don't even meet the standard that's set out in, in that provision. I would agree. So if we're, our discretion is a little more solid, then we don't need to have further discussion from the parties or the public. All right, I mean, I, I look at the main statute, which says the board may reconsider and it doesn't really give any more further guide, any guidance beyond we may consider within certain time limitations. And then the zoning ordinance, the Cape Elizabeth zoning ordinance, says within one year, as it, uh, shall not be considered by the board until one year has elapsed. The board may consider a new appeal or application within the one year period if it determines that owing mistake of law or misunderstanding of law and injustice was done, or there's been a change, or or that a change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant reconsideration. Based on the submissions, based on sitting here last month, I, it is my view that the board has not, make an, has not made a mistake of law or has misunderstood any fact. Scratch that. It is my view that, based on the submissions and based on the board meeting last month, that owing to a mistake of law or misunderstanding of fact by the board, and justice has been done. I mean, that's, it's, to me, it's, it's pretty much that clear. I'm going to go ahead and move to deny Verizon's request for reconsideration of the May 27, 2014 Zoning Board decision to uphold the CEO's denial of building permit request to add a wireless telecommunication antenna and associated equipment building to the property at 11 Avon Road. Mr. Chair, you, you could allow 30 seconds of comment on only the issue of what the standard this board is applying in determining whether or not even to reconsider and go to a de novo review on the merits and not take any comment on the substance because uh, we think you've got the wrong standard and you're about to make this threshold decision based on the wrong standard. You may end up coming out the same place, but that would be uh, one option. 
uh, it takes about 20 seconds to make the point. We're using the standard that you cited in your letter. Yes, except this, the renewed proceeding standard doesn't apply to motions for reconsideration before this board. That is for a refiling of an appeal or request for a variance within the one year period. The state statute governs zoning boards of appeals and, and, and overrides any inconsistent provision. So you do have this may, which as the chair has pointed out, has no guidelines whatsoever. But you don't need to find an injustice in order to reconsider under the state statute and it is the state statute and not the municipal ordinance that governs that threshold determination that that's well, there. i think we've that. heard okay, the 30 seconds. That, that was my 30 <laughs> seconds but now now having heard that I, I do want to open it up to at least the attorney from brandon isaacson if he's here Do you mind just coming up to the podium? Thank you. Sorry, Chair. Can we table yeah. Joanna's motion currently? Um, Do we have to move to table? Uh, it's still standing. We haven't had any motion to open it for comment either. <laughs> I, I know. All right. Yes. All I will say is that you have the submission from Mr. Nazi. Unfortunately, he had a conflicting obligation this evening and is not here. And and so I. I would ask that, well, you've consulted yeah, his letter. Yeah, submission. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne, do you want to? I guess your motion is still pending, which was to deny the motion, the request for a reconsideration. Mm -hmm. Does somebody like to second that? I'll second it. All right. All in favor? All right, so one, two, three. So that's uh, the request for reconsideration um, by the request for reconsideration of the May 27, 2014 zoning board decision to uphold the CEO's denial of a building permit requesting to address, sorry, requesting to add wireless telecommunication antennas and associated equipment building to the property 11 Avon Road, map U12, lot 12 is denied. Was five, no. Is denied in accordance with 30A MRSA section 2691-3F. We, we would ask the board to make a determination about whether this decision was also a vote under your municipal ordinance and then make that clear. If you've concluded it's just under the state statute, that's fine. But from the discussion I heard this evening, there's a lot of talk about injustice, this, so we think it's important. This is out of order. Yeah. This is we're, out of order. We're, <laughs> so that's my request. I'd like to add what is denied pursuant to 30A MRSA the t section 2691 3F. That's added to the findings for denial. Thank you. Um, and the last order of business was the first order of old business. Uh, is Mr. Toothaker here? Okay. So the last uh, order of business is to hear the request of Mark Toothaker to reapprove the variance at Two Wheeler Road, map U16, lot one. This variance was unanimously approved on December 11th, 2013, but it was not recorded at the Registry of Deeds within 90 days as required by the zoning ordinance. Uh, we do not have any comment from Mr. Toothaker. Uh, any public comment? Um, just open up the board discussion. I'd just like to quickly ask Ben, have you spoken to him? Did you? I, I did speak to him. Uh, he, he, he was planning on coming to the last meeting. We, we had to bump him off the agenda because we didn't have the right members coming from the last meeting that were at the December meeting of, because of the board turnover. I called him back and said he'd be the first item on the next month. I thought that he intended to be here, but it may have slipped his mind. Uh, 
So it's up to the four members of the board that were present at, at the December meeting who granted the variance uh, to decide if uh, a reapproval of the variance is warranted uh, based on the circumstance that uh, Mr. Tubaker forgot to record the variance within the required time period. Which four of us is it? Which four of us is it? Sorry. It is you, Joanna, John, Josh, and Matt. Matt. Chair, I have a question. Sure. What's the basis on point in which Ben just made the comment that the discussion is limited to the four people that attended the first time that the grant, the various was granted? How do we, what's that process? Where is that? Well, that, that process came from me to simplify the process. The, the other option to bring the other board members into it would be to rehear the whole variance with all the application materials. And I, uh, I, I didn't think that would be the, what the it's, I mean, it would, it would certainly seem to, to invite the other board members to um, be part of the discussion and the uh, granting, the you know, reapproval of the granting of the variance, we would need to the other, the new board members would have to hear the application. Yeah, and, and I think I think the new board members could comment on on this in theory about whether we can reapprove a variance like this, but I don't think they would feel comfortable voting substantively on the application. But certainly, theoretically, you know, here we are. We have an expired variance. They, I, I don't. I don't think there's any problem with them commenting on the process, but, so, I, but I don't think they'd want to vote on the variance. So are the choices either going ahead with reapproving it now or just tabling it till next time? I, I, I think, okay. sorry, I, I, think we, I think we either vote on it now or if the board isn't comfortable with this process and wants to see something else, then I can, I can make Mr. Toothaker aware of that. And if the whole application needs to come back, then that's what we'll do. I, I mean, personally, we approved it in December. I, I mean, I, I would reapprove it. It would be nice to have him here just to explain why the 90 days passed without him, um, you know, allowing it to lapse because he didn't record it um, with the Registry of Deeds. But to me, I don't think my decision to reapprove would turn necessarily on his explanation. Um, maybe if we reapproved it and then 90 days later he was asking for another reapproval at some point, you know, it starts to take up time, board time, and, you know, we've already gone through it. But I, I don't have any real strong um, feelings against reapproving the issuance of the variance that we just approved last December. I guess I kind of feel like there was some opposition to this one and we went ahead and approved it and now there's been no recording of it. There's been no action. So it, and he's not here. And, not here. <laughs> and it just kind of says to me like this wasn't that necessary, which is kind of a fundamental no, <laughs> premise of your decision to grant a variance is its necessity. And so, um, yeah. Which is kind of why, I mean, I personally would prefer to table it as opposed to just reapproving it with no reason Literally to do it. <laughs> well, we, we did notice the abutters. So, yeah, I see the notice. So if anyone, if anyone was opposed to the reapproval of it, they, they did have that legal opportunity. And we approved it. I mean, mm -hmm. We approved it mm -hmm. for the objections of the abutters. Mm -hmm. The ab abutters have been noticed that mm -hmm. you're back here for reapproval. They, they could have come back and, I mean, just, just as um, Mr. Toothaker could have come back and argued in favor of the reapproval, they could have come here. Was and, he and scheduled for their last meeting? It was scheduled for the meeting here. Because of the, and he, he was here. here, he showed up at that point. And was he right. here and we told him that we weren't going to get to him last time? No, I think no. he was at the beginning. 
No, he, no. he wasn't here because I, I called him hours before the meeting and told him that we weren't going to hear it because I knew we weren't going to have, at that point, I knew we weren't going to have the right members. So I called him on the Tuesday afternoon before the meeting and told him not to come. Okay, my mistake, I thought there was somebody who actually was on the agenda but was pushed I think that was the first couple okay. that we saw. He, right, right. Understood. Um, I'll, I have my two cents on this. I don't think we should rubber stamp prior variances that were granted. The burden is on the applicant to show up and to participate. It's a possibility that the next time that Mr. Toothaker is here and this application is here, we decide no. Doesn't mean that it's a no or a yes, it's just that that's a possibility that we could consider, theoretically. Yes, it would be more efficient if we do grant it this evening, but um, I, I take Joanna's point that it wasn't a, a clean application the last time. Um, and, and a related point is that um, I'm not sure whether a, a part of the board can hold the power to grant a variance outside of the other board members. Um, that's just the technical aspect. So that if we're all sitting here, you either have to recuse or you have to vote or decide what you're going to do. So um, I'm, I'm interested in tabling the, the, the application uh, and then due notice will be given and, and he can be on the first one. I, I don't, do not anticipate any issues with this application. That is procedurally, it's clean air free tape. Is it expensive for us to re-notice stuff? Not terribly. I mean, well, it's, it's 25 letters and probably an hour of staff time and 25 yeah. mailings, so, yeah. I, I, I don't know. No, I just said that procedurally, I'm okay with uh, with the procedure um, that Ben has sort of put forward. That the, the members that heard this appeal previously vote on it, and uh, and whether or not that's tonight or whether or not that's at the at the next meeting, I think that's. Uh, still up for discussion, but I am okay um, sort of not participating in in sort of reapproval. And I and like Ben said, I wouldn't be comfortable without reviewing a full application. Uh, so I guess the next question is, if it's tabled because Mr. Toothaker's not here, um, are, are we requiring him to to come back and, and represent the entire application? Is that? I, I mean, I guess we have several issues here. Are we tabling it because he's not here? Because I, I, is there a requirement that he be here? I, I mean, obviously, if he's here, we can ask him questions, and he can respond, and we can say, why didn't you file this with the Registry of Deeds within 90 days? And he's going to explain why he didn't. Um, that may or may not be. Um, uh, you know, an important fact as to whether or not we decide this, but it may not be. Um, there's nobody here opposing it. It's been noticed. Um, I, I think Mr. Toothaker could also choose not to, not to comment at all, right? I mean, if he were here. He, he could, right? He could be here and he could say, I, I stand on my, you know, what? Previous application yeah. or whatever. I, I, I stand on my, my previous submission and the request for reapproval. I, I, I stand on the record that was submitted in December. Right. Yeah. Period. Period. Which is which is which is essentially what he has done by not being here. Well, I guess from my perspective, I feel like there has been a little bit of confusion. It sounds like with the last two meetings, he was on the agenda. He got kind of a last-minute call not to come. He was certainly clearly on the agenda tonight. And frankly, if I'm being asked to just vote on this with someone not even showing up, I'd be inclined to say, I'm sorry, you should have recorded it timely. But I'm, my personal preference would be to table it until next time and give him another chance in the event that there was confusion about what was happening with the meetings and then see what happens next time. And Ben, did you talk to him before this meeting? No, I, I haven't talked to him. It's, it's been a couple of weeks since I've talked to him. Is he a permanent resident? I believe so.
I mean, I, I, I don't love the idea of tabling it, but I certainly wouldn't want to deny it. <laughs> I would prefer tabling it, um, as, as you've suggested, over denying it. So if it's tabled, is, he, is the December package being resubmitted well, I, for, for approval by the entire board? I guess that's my question. Right. So that, I, that's wrong. That's wrong. So that, there's two options there. One is that we have a quorum with the people that originally passed it, which is, they would have to have four. And they, the remaining board members who are present at the next meeting have two options. Either they recuse themselves, so it's just the, the quorum of the four, or if they wish to vote, then they have to hear whatever necessary information is necessary for them to vote. I mean, this isn't necessarily dissimilar from the reconsideration. Mike and I weren't here for that last meeting, and, you know, we're really not, we don't have standing to kind of weigh in on reconsideration. We weren't here. Because we were determining whether or not to reconsider. I mean, you weren't, you, you did not have any information. Right. You could not so, make a determination. So I mean, it's, it, it, I mean, if we're, it, it seems as though the four of us that were here, we're either going to approve it tonight, you know, based upon our understanding of the record back in December, and rereading the minutes, which is what I did. You know, and, and, and if we're not going to do that, then I, then I guess, you know, wait a minute, this is the third time, this will have been then the third time it's come before the ZBA. And to, not necessarily to, to, to his, you know, any fault of his own necessarily, okay? But it's the third time before the board, we've got three new board members, and at some point it's like, hey, they're, they're on the board. You know, and, and in fairness to, to them, to, to everyone on the board, they, they should they should hear this too. And oh, by the way, it would have been six months since we heard it. So I guess my feeling is that if the four of us want to are comfortable voting on it, then then we should do that. If we're not, for a variety of reasons, then let's table it and and have them come back. On the agenda next month. For the whole board. For the, whoever's here. He, he, he resubmits the application. He can resubmit the application. And that's and it's submitted to the board for full consideration in June or July, I guess. Can we do that? Well, I mean, to reapprove. I mean, under approved. the section that we were just looking at for reconsideration, are we allowed to after essentially take it as a new application? After when a it's decision has been made by the board, a new appeal or application of similar import shall not be considered by the board until one year has elapsed following the date of such decision. I'm sure that was probably intended to be a refer to a denial. Right. How does how does that approve just a, a re? Approval. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I know it's, it's the problem is it's not called reconsideration though it's actually called renewal, right. which this kind of is because he didn't record it. See, if the applicant was here, he could withdraw the application, so there's no determination. But it's already. I don't think he could because we he voted on it. It's already been approved. Yeah, a decision has been made. I mean, he can't undo the fact that we approved it. Yeah, yeah that, we, that's we should right. just vote on it tonight. <laughs> I mean, we've made a decision. You know, it's, it's the fact that he didn't file the thing in the, you know, in the, <laughs> <laughs> are, there are no provisions for, like, an extension or anything like that? No, there's, there's nothing in that, I mean, I, I haven't looked carefully, there's nothing in the ordinance for this type of situation. No. So basically, it sounds, like we can, it sounds like we can make him come back in a new application, but we don't have to. Well, but we can't, no. wait, but if, can we? No, he cannot come back. He Sorry. can't. Just wait a year. That's right. Okay. Well, we can make him come back after a year, but we well, I mean, we can we can deny. That would be effectively denying his. Right. I mean, he he can't come back 
and just resubmit the old application. We've already ruled on that in the past year. So if, if we table it, we can really only table it just to hear the discrete issue of the renewal of the granting of the variance. Am I the only one of the four of us here that's having any kind of hesitation at all about re-upping this? Uh, I'm hesitating. And also, I think that we are precluded uh, now that you know, I'm really thinking about it. the same provision that John just read, mentioned, is that the decision by us has been made. That's it. It can come back before us if there's a mistake of law or fact. Those two things have not happened. So how do we have jurisdiction to either, uh, because we didn't table the application in the first instance, it has expired. And he had to go to the courthouse and file the variant, and that has not happened. So what is in front of us? Um, in that light means that um, he's precluded from seeking a variance for a year. I mean, actually looking at his, uh, the, the notice here, to hear the request of Mark Toothaker to reapprove the variance. Reapprove. To reapprove. To approve again. Well, then if he's reapproving, then, we're, we need then to. where's the application? And we can't do that anyway. Right. Uh, uh, why, why can't you do that? I'm just looking at the statute, and it says that if it's not recorded, the variance is void. So it has to be reapproved. We have to apply it. It has expired. Well, yeah. The, you know, the variance has expired. The, under renewed proceedings, it talks about after a decision has made, been made, a, a new appeal or application. I mean, you, you could read that, that this isn't a new or different application. I, I'm not sure that he goes with it, but that's up to you guys. Uh, and, uh, Sorry, I'm my brother. I know. After you, sir. It sounds it's like the intent of the. Because it's void. The variance is void if it's not recorded it's not in 90 void. days. I, I, I haven't, haven't resubmitted. Okay. No, it sounds like the intent is um, if to preclude people from just, oh, I was denied. Let me just apply the next month and keep on, keep on doing it. And this isn't that situation, but it, it, um, it did expire. So is he, is well, he, are we allowed to consider the same application before a year has elapsed? No, well, I mean, if that, that would kick us into the same factors of if there's been a mistake of law. I mean, that's. I, I, I think Mike just, I mean, said that essentially that the, the variance is void. So, I mean, I'm a, to me, if it's void, then he can, he can resubmit a new application. In. Except for that our ordinance says you can't resubmit for a year. Resubmit an existing or a new one? Resubmit a new. Or, and, and I mean, I, I or guess all, all, I, all I'd want to see is something <laughs> in the ordinance that gives us, you know, some discretion. And, and I guess the situation that I am, I am just, or the, is if he was here and he said, I was going to, but then my grandmother got sick in Florida and I had to leave town for 60 days, but he's not here. If you're watching so, at home. But, but <laughs> he's driving over now. But having said all of that, um, we don't have that argument. If we table it, he could come back, but but we don't have any. But there's no. We're not granted any discretion. It doesn't seem. I mean, there's nothing in the ordinance that says we have the discretion to consider a heavy application. I mean, I'm pretty sure that on this board, we we we've had situations where variances of approved variances of lapsed. Yeah, but it's usually like three years later they come back. I mean, I think we did one last month, mm -hmm. or two months ago, and it was. You it was know, like previous, five years or something. Previous okay. owners had, had been granted a variance. Okay. Um, and, and John, truth be told, this particular crystallization of knowledge did not arise uh, with that. And this is new. I mean, this, this thinking as to the expiration of a variance and that the jurisdiction of the board is, not, is no longer here. They, and there's no application. Yeah, I'm, just, yeah, I'm just troubled by, I mean, just 
that there's something logically that just that's what isn't clicking in where okay the variance is lapsed it's void whatever the case may be okay and what now you got to wait nine months to resubmit well it does yeah, allow for their for the board to consider a new appeal or application within the one year period if the board determines that owing to a mistake of law or a misunderstanding of fact an injustice was done so who knows what he might say on that but we don't have anything from him that says oh I I thought that the 90 days ran from who knows what he might say but we don't have anything and that's part of why I would be inclined if I had to decide now to say I'm sorry we don't have any re we don't have any reason to rehear this and so I kind of prefer to table it but uh, so at, let, let's say in December his, his the variance was approved what was was he informed as to what his what he needed to do after that and in what form was that and was he represented by uh, counsel or was he, was he just but he was not he was not okay so did he know exactly what he needed to do within 90 days there's usually a big doesn't it say on the form like you must record this within 90 days well I'll tell you what happened <laughs> 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 the, the day after the variance was approved the contractor called chomping at the bit to get this permit and start the project. I said, okay, I gave the directions to the contractor. This is what needs to be done, submit. And he came in, submitted the permit application. And I said, you need, you know, you need to have the owner do this. So, you know, technically was the owner made aware of this? He, he could argue that he wasn't and that's because Literally on Wednesday morning, I had a contractor on the counter wanting to start the project. And then I don't know what happened between him and his contractor. He still has the same contractor that wants to do the project. I think the contractor got sidetracked on a different project, forgot to tell him, but I mean, they're still working together. But, you know, the contractor was sort of the middleman in that process because he was the one on Wednesday morning beating on the counter, I want to do, it was December, and he wanted to do his footings right before the ground was going to freeze. And uh, so I said, okay, this is what you have to do. He has to record this, you can come back in with that, and they disappeared. I moved on to bigger and better things, and next thing you know, 90 days is gone. I, I don't know if there were other extenuating circumstances, but, you know, Aaron asked the question, was, was he formally notified? and um, he was not formally notified by me. Which it's not our obligation to do. We don't have any no. notification. I mean, it's the law. <laughs> his, you know, his authorized, his, his builder at that point was his authorized representative for the, for the building project. And, you know, and, and he was made aware of that, so. Mm. If we move forward, you know, we can just flesh out some clear direction. So, so I cannot believe in the span of one meeting we are referencing 19 <laughs> I mean, it just blows me away. How does this happen? Once we find something. We, we just <laughs> grab onto it and run with it. <laughs> if, if he was first, if he kept his first spot on the agenda with him, we would have discovered That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, if he comes back and there's not a mistake of law or fact he could have just made a mistake or yeah but isn't that a isn't that what's a his mistake wait his mistake is he forgot isn't, to file the variance isn't, isn't that a board mistake of law or misunderstanding of isn't that yeah. the board yeah, in the, in if the it decision. determines that owing to a mistake or misunderstanding effect and injustice was done. But that's on I, I behalf just think that's of the our part. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's on that's an us, not a him. I think that's it doesn't say that. It doesn't, doesn't say, say that. <laughs> I I just but if but if this is what but if this is what we're hanging our hat on to 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 
I don't know what we're doing, reapprove or, or to, to listen to the resubmission? I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not sure that's going to carry that. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure that's going to carry the debt. Because, I mean, but, but the thinking is if we're going to, do, if we want to give them a chance to make a presentation and argue before the board before just denying it because he didn't show up. Yeah. Okay, but, but to a notice. But is he go, all right? But is he so he shows up and we're going to say, you know, Mr. Toothaker. By the way, you got to limit your discussion to whether we made a mistake of law or a misunderstanding of or a misunderstanding of fact. Go. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, we don't care. Yeah. We, we don't want to hear about the very much the variance. We another, just, another just, question. If so, if if he comes back and we hear his arguments and choose to deny it, at that point we're just restarting the clock for him again he's losing six more months i don't think we are no, i think it would, would be just from be, the under the december decision we would just be denying <laughs> his request for a renewal or re renewed, renewed. Uh, i will just state the obvious it's seven months now so he only, only has five to go <laughs> right. Right. and by then <laughs> and he'll know to record uh, it he'll be racing it, again. It, <laughs> but i mean but, but i mean but i mean it, it was a contested request there are, I mean, so it, there is more, there's more import to not allowing a renewal because it would be contested again. There's new board members. It, it may not go the same way. I mean, even though it's just another six months, it's just another six months before he has to go through the same thing. But, I, you know, that's, it is what it is. It's not our fault. It's for us. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, does it make any sense to... Table it to table it. I can go either way. Okay. Personally. Does it make sense to table it? <laughs> That's you were saying, like an hour ago. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite that bad. We're getting close. Uh, does it make any sense to table it? And, and over the ensuing 30 days, table it and resubmit. I mean, you're resubmitting the application because it is void, is it not? The variance is void, but I think he needs to make an argument that we're going to hear renewed proceedings if we table it. Meaning, he, okay. Is he resub, if we table it, is he resubmitting the application and, and focusing at least initially on whether there's a mistake of law or misunderstanding? Okay, fine. I think in, so. But in, the, but in the ensuing 30 days, we, maybe we put this to the, to the town attorney and say, are you telling me this is the only escape? I mean, this is the only venue in which a right. Do we have a no void a void variance can be presented? You know, re, re, represent back to the board is after one year. That's it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I'd I'd like if to. It is. It is. I mean, if it is, it is. But I, I I think that's a good idea because, I mean, frankly, if there's something in the ordinance that would allow us those who were here last December to just hear him say, yeah, I mean, for whatever reasons I didn't get in, you know, can I have 90 more days? Yes. I mean, that, that would be what I would like to do if something allows us to do it. But I, I don't see it there right now. I just want to make two points, and, and I'll be more than happy to move along with the motion. And, and is that the application in December, it's over. It was approved. And so the, the variance is two steps authority by the board and registration with the state or the courthouse, all right? You can't do one without the other. I think that's right. So here, the, we have no authority over an application that's currently before us. Um, when I look at reapproval, I'm thinking, how is that possible? How do, how do we reapprove an application that has already been decided? Because that's more like reconsideration. But park that. So if you fail to register, I see it as a void or it has expired. Your authority by the town to register your variance has expired. And then there is nothing there. There's no prop, real property right held by the property owner at that time. So then they come back before the, the, the town. And what options do they have? Section 19.53, which would be some sort of renewed proceedings option, or B, file a new application outside the one-year time period. 
That's the two options that I see. If I, if I am be happy to be staying corrected, but that's what I think. Right. I mean, those, no, those are the two options that I see also. <laughs> but I mean, I think John's suggestion that the town council may be able to point us in a direction where we have some discretion outside of those two options. Does this question, and no one may have the answer, but does the statute speak to, to this issue, I wonder? Because clearly our ordinance isn't very clear, but. Uh, I don't know if the ordinance isn't clear, or it just doesn't. It, there's just nothing in the ordinance that applies to a renewal request. Or right, I guess, yeah, you're right. That's, I guess that's what, there's nothing specific to this situation, I, I guess. So, Matt, you or Matt, do you suggest that, that this agenda item <coughs> Is it tabled or is it denied? In the way you're you're thinking through the It's an anomaly it's in the words of Al Gore, it's an irregularity. I mean, I don't see how it could be on the agenda. Well, well okay. All right. So let's assume that there's agenda's some not there? No, let's assume that there's some basis upon which it is there, because it is there, right? So I, I think the best option is to have a table. In the intervening time, we actually express the applicant some some concerns, have them come in, and have a, have a discussion because essentially there is nothing for us to approve. There's no application before us. How does the board express concerns to the applicant who's not? That would be under the five three nineteen five three. That he has to act under. Five three nineteen five three e. That there's okay. no there's no process for. Reapproval is, I think, what you're saying. That's There's right. no, we don't have any authority to we do that. We would exercise the discretion to reconsider the application, which is the experience that we had earlier this evening, which is probably without comment. We say, sure, we reopen that application. Then we hear it from the applicant. The entire board now votes. You recuse, you recuse. You're not here, you're not here. But we need a quorum. It's not the four. Then it's, it's, we're back into the procedure, the, um, into the realm that it's a live application. It's part of the, the board, I do note, I guess, notice, and that the board has jurisdiction over that application. So, so he will, his, he his would request have a request will be for reconsideration Renewal of proceedings. Renewal, renewed yeah. proceedings. And he'd have to express um, mistake of law, mis misunderstanding. I don't think he's available but, to make a mistake of law, but okay. Okay. I mean, I, I, I still read that as the board's mistake of law or misunderstanding. Yeah, I don't, I don't view that. And we've already right. ruled in his favor, so I don't. But we can argue on that. Sure. Down the, I mean, well, we're saying we don't have authority to do just some kind of reapproval thing. We need something under. 1953E that allows us to proceed. Because yeah. he can't, he can't do, we can't look at it until a year after December. But, or unless there's one of exceptions, but what if we hang our hat on? I get change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant. But I, I, the, only thing that, the only thing I would say is if, if we're asking him to come back before the board and argue E, well, I'm not going to approve it. I, I would vote not to approve it under E because. There's well, you don't know until you hear what he says. Well, no, I, you don't know what no, he's going to say. I, I guess, but <laughs> I think that would be for the reconsideration, not for the actual variance itself. It, it, it would allow him to apply or allow us to hear an application within the one year. But, but but I think way, no matter what, only, he's got to do it. But all the only way we hear the application is if, is if this board is convinced or he convinces us that we, the board, some people don't agree with that, but I, this is my view, and I agree yours too, that we the board somehow made a mistake of law or misunderstanding of facts in approving his application in the first place. Or the third, or the third part where um, there's a change that has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant reconsideration. And that would be? And that would be what? The fact the variance that variance Well, who knows? But, but the point is it would give him an opportunity. an opportunity to present his case on that. It would also give us, as you suggested, kind of an opportunity to talk the attorney and be like, what is this? <laughs> right, right, well, right. The right. other thing that I want to make clear on that is that 
whoever does speak with the applicant should recommend or suggest strongly that he provides a written submission because the board may not allow the person to speak once he arrives. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, I'll just leave it at that, uh, and if the person wishes to submit materials, that we'll be more than happy to consider it. Okay? Okay. One, one point I want to make is uh, I'm reasonably certain that I've seen in other town ordinances that this provision usually reads, after decision has been made by the board that is adverse to the applicant, a new appeal or application shall not be considered, which then opens the door to Since it wasn't refiling for basically reconsideration if there was some kind of issue like a recording problem or a time problem. So that's something that obviously we don't get into. That's for the, for the ordinance committee, I suppose. And but this is usually reconsideration too, not renewal. Right. There, right. Is, a, there is a provision to, uh, to grant an extension under 19.5. But that's for construction, right? Yeah. That's for failure to complete construction within a year. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of notwithstanding right. the recording requirement, which is interestingly explicitly set forth in our ordinance. And he was supposed to give you the form of recording 10 days after he did it, too. Correct. OK. Um, Chair, I know that there's no one here, not even the applicant. We have just spent <laughs> yeah, I know, right? 30 minutes on a um, I don't know something. What, something. Um, <laughs> theoretical discussion. Right. Do we have a motion? Or may I suggest a motion? Or Joanna, do you have some thoughts on this particular point? I would move to table consideration of a request for renewal of an application. Or I guess I would just move to table Mr. Toothaker's request to our next meeting. Do I have a second to table? Do I have a second? I second that. All in favor of tabling Mr. Toothaker's request till our next meeting? Seven, nothing. So Mr. Toothaker's motion is tabled to our next. Mr. Toothaker's request is tabled to our next meeting. Ben, will you follow up with um, the town attorney? Yeah. To kind of get some. I don't think so. I don't. I don't see where. I don't see where it's warranted. For what? To f get some clarity about how that provision 19.53, whatever it is, five applies. E. E. Sorry. Or, or if there is some other provision that, that or angle that we're somehow missing as to how we can reprocess the avoided variance. Yeah. I think we need some guidance. Or let's just, or let's it, just it, it seems, I mean, it, it, okay. it, it seems that it's, I, I, there, there, should, there may be something that we are overlooking that would allow us to reapprove, just, you know, basically administratively say, yes, we approved you in December, you didn't get it within the 90 days, you have one more shot, and we haven't found that in the ordinance. It might be there. It can't hurt to ask town council if we're missing something. And I'm curious about his thoughts about how that provision is meant to apply, if he has any insight into whether that, it, what kind of mistake that's supposed to be. Is it a right. or mistake? Is it any mistake? Is it, yeah. what is it? What's the standard? Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make Eight. a motion to adjourn the meeting. Anybody second it? Second. All in favor? 7 nothing. We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>